that I've served in, uh, as chairman of the House Committee, uh, Ag Committee, and we're still all serving in Congress, at least until January 3rd. Uh, so we just thought it would be um, appropriate to kind of get people together and uh, talk about some of the history. So I'm honored to have Chairman Conaway with us today from Texas, the immediate past chairman, Chairman Lucas from Oklahoma, uh, and Chairman Roberts uh, from Kansas, the great state of Kansas. So we're all here in 1300 Longworth uh, to talk about uh, one of our favorite subjects, and that is the House Ag Committee. So on uh, April 29th, 1920, Congressman Lewis Williams of North Carolina, who I guess was known as the father of the House, introduced a resolution to create a standing committee on agriculture. The resolution was agreed to by the House uh, four days later on May 3rd of 1820. So these are Williams' remarks on the House floor upon introducing the uh, resolution. Uh, he said, uh, gentlemen, uh, say that there are in this country three interests, the agriculture, commercial, and manufacturing. It now happens it, sir, that the agriculture, the great leading and substantial interest in this country, has no committee, no organized tribunal in this house, no to hear and to determine on their grievances. So uh, if the commercial or manufacturing interests are affected, the cry resounds throughout the country. Remonstrances, remonstrances flow in upon us, and they are referred to committees appointed for the purpose of guarding them, and adequate uh, remedies are provided. But sir, when agriculture is oppressed and makes complaint, uh, when the tribunal is in this house to hear and determine those grievances, it's not there. So um, Mike and I had planned a, uh, to host a celebration in April of this last year, or this year, to mark the anniversary of the establishment of the committee in 1820. But as you all know, the uh, pandemic uh, stopped that situation. And so now the plan is to try to have this next year, as soon as we get out of this pandemic hell and get, can get back to uh, some kind of normal situation. And, uh, you know, so I will, you know, the staff will be here to organize all that and I'm willing to come back. I think Mike is willing to come back. Uh, Pat, you're willing to come back and, and others to, uh, you know, to commemorate that, that time. So. Um, we just thought before Mike and I had uh, back to Texas and Minnesota that we want to take this opportunity to let folks know that uh, there will be a public celebration and uh, we haven't forgotten about this, but uh, it's kind of beyond our control. Uh, so that's what we're doing here today. It's kind of an informal deal. We have a lot of expertise and history in this room, expertise and history in this room. And I have been prevailed upon that uh, when we have this party next year, we are going to have a, a re-enactment uh, or a re-get-together of the Second Amendments uh, a band to come and play at the, uh, <laughs> at the re reunion. <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Roberts, you will be asked to, to uh, sing with me like you normally are when we're together. So. What are we going to sing? You know... <clears throat> Maybe it's hard to be humble. How's that? <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> in the meantime... How about, how about um, when, I walk out, when I walk out, I walk out backwards so you'll think, so you think I'm coming in. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. I'll have to look it up. So I don't know what's going on with this audio, but uh, anyway. In the meantime, we're going to be unveiling a website that will be on both the Democratic and Republican uh, websites <clears throat> here uh, in the committee devoted to remembering the history and the people that made this committee special. So uh, what we're going to do here now is we're going to um, we're going to hear from uh, oh. some of the members and they're going to talk about uh, things that uh, they remember about the committee. But first I'm going to recognize Mike to talk about a special activity that will be taking place during the 200th anniversary year. So Mike Conaway, former chairman, uh, 
I'll turn the floor over to you. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that, and uh, thanks for putting all this together. As a part of the 200th anniversary, we began uh, wanting to write a book about the history of the committee. Uh, Pat, you'll be featured prominently throughout the entire 200-year uh, history of our <laughs> 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 My staff did dared me to to, to, to tease you like that, but uh, uh, Bart Fisher, uh, former staff director, chief economist here, and brainiac of the First Order, uh, has agreed. He's now currently the co uh, uh, leader at uh, the ag uh, ag and food policy program at uh, A&M, &M, is leading the effort to write this book. Uh, he and a, a guy named David uh, Erstis and uh, a former historian from USDA named uh, Dr. Ann uh, uh, Eflin will be putting that together. And they had intended to have all this finished last year as well, but the pandemic is, uh, uh, has messed that up. Bart and his team came up here. They've been dragging stuff out of the archives and, and going through it. So I think it's going to be a really terrific, hardbound book that, uh, that will be useful to, uh, to future members of the committee who uh, don't have the kind of background that, that you guys brought to the table uh, throughout this process. Uh, one of those pieces of little nuggets that we had is the list of former chairmen. And... Um, I'm the, Colin has, uh, is one of three people who've uh, done it twice with a break. So Colin is the uh, uh, 48th chairman and the 51st chairman. I'm the 50th chairman. Frank is the 49th chairman. And uh, Senator Roberts, you uh, are 44th and third, I think. No, you're the 44th chairman of, uh, of the committee as well. And so I think this history of the, of the committee is going to be a terrific uh, asset for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, the group and a uh, few future members of Congress to uh, to be able to look at and, and understand it because one of the things and I'm a really a piker at this group Pat you've done 40 Colin 30 Frank 30 ish I'm 16 so I'm a real rookie in comparison to you guys so I didn't bring the kind of historical perspective to the fight in 18 that you guys had and, uh, uh, and I think it would have been helpful to understand the 18 Farm Bill wasn't written in a vacuum. It was built on decades of other programs that morphed into other things. And knowing that background, like, like Pat and, and Colin, you do, guys did, uh, would have been helpful, I think, to me to have been able to, to do that. So uh, future chairmen that don't have that, that uh, kind of evolutionary history of what happened to, the, to whatever the Farm Bill they're working on, uh, this, book, this book should uh, aid in that regard. So again, uh, Colin, thank you for putting this together this morning. I'm looking forward to the celebration next year to, to, to be back in this uh, room in, a, in an unofficial capacity, but at least back in this room in some capacity. Well, thank you, Mike. And, um, you know, we, uh, there is a lot of history that uh, some, some of which we just as soon forget. Uh, <clears throat> you know, when I was chairman, uh, we almost uh, uh, lost the bill a couple times, and then when it finally did pass, it was vetoed twice by the president, and we had to override the veto. So that was a, a milestone. Yep. And then when Frank was chairman, uh, I think for the first time in the history, uh-oh, I should have turned this off. <laughs> for the first time in the history, uh, I think, the bill failed on the floor of the House. And it took us uh, nine months to put, put the damage back together again, you know. And when Pat was here in 96, uh, Freedom to Farm, uh, it failed in committee. The first time it came up, and they had to go back to the drawing board. He's doing a good job of showing where you guys failed. I appreciate that history. Yeah, well, you were close, you know, and we <laughs> well, didn't. <laughs> a, thir a 213 to 211 is a landslide. No, I know, but, I mean, there, there were times where <laughs> well, if you'd have brought that bill up, it would have been killed. You know? uh, so, anyway, so uh, there's a lot of history, and uh, these bills are not easy to do. Uh, they're, they were hard when Pat was here, and they are getting har harder every time, and... Uh, Frank did an outstanding job. I was pleased to work with him, and so we'll recognize Frank to tell you what he remembers about uh, his time as chairman. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Chairman and Mr. Chairman for being able to join you today. And it's exactly right. When I came, Mike, to the committee in May of 1994, uh, Pat was the ranking member, soon to become chairman, the first Republican chairman in, what, 40 years at that point? Uh, Colin was one of the senior members, uh, one of the senior subcommittee Ah, he was a puppy too. I forget. I forget. Junior at that point. But when I came and joined Pat, uh, the world uh, had taken a great political change, the revolution of 1994, and the old supply-based management programs from 1933 to 1994, I think uh, the Chairman Emeritus would acknowledge, 
we couldn't just continue with the status quo. And Pat had to craft what I'd refer to as the second generation of Farm Bill, a dramatic change, because we had to have a safety net, right, Mr. Chairman? We had to have a continued safety net. We couldn't continue to do it the old way. And Chairman had to create that second generation Farm Bill, and it was tough. It was tough. And then along comes my turn of duty, uh, and that second generation Farm Bill concept, which you'd refined in your bill in 08, and which, by the way, I voted with you to override those vetoes enthusiastically. The second generation wasn't politically sustainable anymore because no matter how good the legislative policy is, you got to be able to get it across the floor and get it into the code book, the political process. And we came up with the, what was the third generation, working with Colin, the third generation of farm policy, which Mike refined in his farm bill, and we had a hard time. We had a hard time. Uh, I've always said the biggest challenge about agriculture is while most of the folks we serve with the United States House really want to do the right thing, very few members of the body have a clue what the right thing is when it comes to the countryside or production ag. And trying to help people understand the things they don't have a clue they don't understand is tough. But that's what the Ag Committee is all about. I think the Chairman Emeritus would acknowledge when he brought me in to see the chairman at the time in 1994, Mr. De La Garza, and he advised me on how to properly address and interact with the chairman, uh, I didn't know that's the way he wanted to be treated later, but that's the way I did. And nonetheless, we made things happen, the four of us here together, in an ever harder, harder, harder environment. So I'm proud of our work, all the bills we've done. I hope my emeritus chairman over here would agree. Well, thank you very much, uh, Frank. And, uh, you know, we've, all of us, uh, worked hard to have a bipartisan committee here, and uh, we have done that over the years, and I hope we'll continue in the future. And we're pleased to have uh, Pat Roberts, who's no longer in the House, but he was here for a number of years, and uh, I was here as well, 95, 96, when he became chairman, but I was junior. At that time, I was way down the rank, and I, w I had a lot to learn at that point. Um, but uh, Pat and I have become, I, th I would say, very good friends. And uh, we have done a lot of things together, and including he, he has performed with me a number of times. Uh, right, Pat? Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, we're going to keep that tradition going when, uh, whenever we end up having this party. So uh, Pat Roberts, uh, probably the only person that I, I think that in history that's served as chairman of both the House and Senate Ag Committee. So um, we're pleased to have you here and uh, you can uh, tell us um, what you remember about your chairmanship in the House. Wow, uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, this, this. This is a very special place for me. Uh, 28 years, as a matter of fact, I was the chief of staff for Keith Sebelius, who served for 12 years. But when you were chief of staff to a member whose primary purpose was to serve on the Agriculture Committee and represent the big first district of Kansas, uh, you were sort of second in command. And it worked out very well for me because people remembered that I was chief of staff to Keith Sebelius, who was very popular on the committee. So I even got my first amendment uh, done based on that when Tom Foley was the chairman and uh, he leaned over, he motioned me up here, he says, you're gonna get from stat some static from the Democrats, more especially Tom Harkin, who else? And, uh, and he said, don't worry, I'll, I'm gonna take care of you. Uh, you're a key, you're a right-hand guy. Uh, that sort of explains what the Ag Committee is all about. And then I had the privilege of serving 16 years in the House. 1952, Eisenhower uh, became president, and during the Eisen Eisenhower landslide, why the uh, House went Republican, and Clifford R. Hope Sr. from Garden City, Kansas, was the chairman for two years. Forty years later, uh, a new chairman from Kansas uh, had that privilege from Dodge City, Kansas, which is only 60 miles away from Garden City. Uh, I pointed that out to Kika de la Garza probably my most favorite chairman of all time, present company excluded, of, of course. course. <laughs> but, um, and I, I used to say that, and he said, uh, 
Well, that is the way it should be. Two years for Republicans, 40 years for Democrats, two years for Republicans. So anyway, uh, I remember those days very well, and I'm just looking over here uh, beyond Sir Michael. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. There were six new Republicans uh, when we came in. That was the great, you know, 94 year, or I guess revolution under Newt. And uh, we did it by straws, and Bill Walper was the ranking member from Virginia. And uh, Bill had whispered in my ear, it's time to figure out who's got seniority before anybody else came in. He said, uh, we draw straws, and I, I, think, uh, I think I'll ask you to go first. Uh, and uh, he said, you just want to look at my hand pretty carefully. And uh, <laughs> so we drew straws, and I came out with the shortest straw because it was sticking right up there at the front. And uh, Bell Emerson saw that from Missouri. Oh, he started on me up one side and down the other. We became great friends. Bill was a wonderful guy. But he always accused me of, uh, uh, you know, cutting a deal. I didn't. That was, uh, that was Bill Walper. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six clear up there uh, with seniority. I can, see the, I can see the chair up there. And uh, those were the days. Uh, I can't help but reflect on a couple of chairmen, if I might. Um, I mentioned Cliff Hope. He was a great man and was respected on uh, both sides of the aisle and got along great. I think that's been the history of this committee. I think it's because it, the type of people we represent, farmers, ranchers, growers, work hard, you know the, the whole story. God bless our people and our constituents. But we know we have to get a farm bill done. And there are a whole series of other very serious subjects within the farm bill. It's a composite. Uh, 12 different sections, I think, uh, perhaps more now. But um, I think we know who we represent, and so it isn't so much what I want or what any other person wants on the Ag Committee. We know that we have to get the bill done. And so it's sort of an 80 percent deal. If I get 80 percent or 75, uh, I should be happy. And on the Democrat side, same thing. Uh, that's how we put the last one together. They got 87 votes in the Senate. But let me reflect on just a couple of people here, if I might. Uh, William R. Pogue from, from the great state of Texas. You're here. A, a Democrat at that time and served for eight years as the chairman. Uh, he, he didn't go by William. He uh, went by Bob. Now, I was a staffer then, and I, I was... When you're around Bob Pogue, you just sort of stood back and waited. And he, uh, he had um, a speech affectation that he used all the time to emphasize his point. And he would be talking along, and all of a sudden he would go, aye, like that. And you never knew when that was going to come popping out. That's Bob Wills. He learned that from Bob Wills. <laughs> the te well, I the Texas Playboys. I, I, yeah, I that's what Bob Wills used to do in the middle of his I, songs. I, I thought that was, ah -ha. <laughs> I think it's about, well, whatever is close. Okay, Bob Wills. Well, Bob Wills and, uh, and Mr. Pogue, uh, he was deposed by the Watergate babies when they came in, and they took out three chairmen because he kept voting uh, conservative, and their, and their record was conservative. And that was a lot like the progressive movement today. And uh, they deposed three chairmen. There was the banking committee. I can't remember the other one. But uh, yeah, and, and uh, so, so Pogue, uh, you know, bit the dust, but he was still subcommittee chairman over commodities, or i.e. the Farm Bill, and the ranking member was Keith Sebelius, who was my predecessor. And so I got in on a lot of that, uh, a lot of that activity. Uh, and, then t and then came Tom Foley, who had to be the smartest chairman in the bunch, uh, all of us, uh, who later became Speaker of the House. And then... Uh, he was from Washington. He also did me favors because of Keith, uh, which tells a lot about the committee. And if I have a favorite, it would be Kika de la Garza. Present company accepted, of course. But Kika was special. And uh, 
He, I don't know if he, he, you still have his portrait up here. It's in the other room. It's in the other room. Oh, that's stunning. I see my. You know the story about that? Pardon me? You know the story about his portrait? Well, he's standing by the shortest fence post. <laughs> <laughs> but but he, he, you know, the rules of the house are uh, that it has to be an oil painting, and it has to do with the historical society, and they got all these rules and regulations. Well, Kika found a, a local artist that he wanted, and it's a watercolor. And so they would not accept it as an official painting in the house. Uh, so for many years, you know, when I, when I got to be chairman, I said, well, where's Kika's painting? And I said, well, it's not, it's not officially accepted. You know, so I went to the speaker, and I said, you know, we got to do something about this. So she officially she made it happen. And we officially accepted Kika's picture, but it's a watercolor. And that's the, the only watercolor that's ever been accepted, as far as I know. So that's another story in the history of the committee. <laughs> well, Kika was, um, as I said earlier, he was the first person to call me. And I was sitting on the front row of our Republican headquarters in Dodge City. And they called the race very early. And... Uh, it was a tough race in the primary, not so much in the general. And I'm sitting there without staff. I just happened to sit down next to some folks. I knew them. But it comes on the tube that I had once. It was about 6.30. I mean, really early. I, I, I didn't expect that. And uh, so Frankie, my wife, was in the back and whatever, and all of a sudden they just announced this. And I said, oh, my God, I'm going to be chairman. And I got thinking about my dad and my mom and everything else and history of the family and whatever and Keith and whatever and I was tearing up and whatever and somebody said, you got a phone call. And here was Kika. And I thought he was going to, you know, congratulate me. Uh, which he, I think he said, I think he said at one time, but he said, um, what am I going to do with all my stuff? <laughs> and so I had to find a room to put the previous chairman's stuff in there, which I, it was unbelievable. And, uh, that was one of the first things that I did. But he and I, upon his request, he says, I, we have to get together so we can get a farm bill done. And I said, well, this is going to be tough because John Kasich is the chairman of the uh, budget committee. And I don't know how to describe John Kasich. Uh, Newt one time when he left the room said, well, now that the adults are in the room, uh, maybe we can get something done. <laughs> But here's John Kasich saying you can have six billion dollars. Six. And we, to continue the farm bill would have been 18, 19, something like that, maybe down to 12. As we, we had a big uh, retreat. And uh, at that retreat, we were getting the word from uh, Dick Army and Newt Gingrich and whatever. And that was fine. That was the ideological wave, I guess, that was supposed to work. And that was the... Uh, the contract with America, which we all had to sign in a great ceremony just on down there on the lawn by the Capitol. Big deal. Uh, I tried to get out of it by sitting under a tree because it was hot. <laughs> and then so, but it was like Michael Jordan. You know, and now, the chairman of the House Agriculture Committee. And so I signed it, but I signed it Pat Robertson because I... <laughs> I didn't agree with about three things of the contract with America. I just did that. When Newt found out about that, I thought I was excommunicated. <laughs> but anyway, back to Kika. We're sitting there. And I'm not going to tell you where, but we were down in the gym, and he wanted to be uh, private. And uh, so we had this conversation in the steam room. And uh, he said, uh, I want to tell you two things. He said, do not worry about my side. I will take care of my side. Even, even Harold Volkmer, which was very difficult to do. He couldn't control me, And so, no, 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 you were, at that point, you were behaving. I was? Yes, well, to a certain degree. <laughs> and so he says, I will take care of my side. It is your side that you will have to worry about. And I said, why is that? He said, because your best friends on the committee will come to you and ask for things that you cannot do and should not do. And boy, was that right. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the four that it took it down. The four that took yeah, it down were Republicans. They went the other way on Freedom to Farm. 
Freedom Farm came about because I would go back to Dodge City and I would meet with the Ford County wheat growers and I said, guys, there's a guy back there named John Kasich. We, don't have enough, we do not have enough money to do the farm bill as we know it. And then we were going through the loan rates and the storage rates and God knows what uh, that, that we all had to go through with that. The set-asides were the big deal. That just meant we set aside more acres than our competitors grew. <laughs> You know, supplied that but much, uh, much more. Leon Torline was the, uh, the farmer he used to dodge. He stood up in the back. He says, Pat, why don't you just scuttle all that stuff, give us a direct payment that we can work out, but give me the freedom to farm my land. I know what I want to do. We even got into cotton production. And uh, number nine, I think, finally. So it was his idea, and then I came back and suggested to staff, and then we sort of adopted that. It was much criticized. You're right, it did not pass at 12 o'clock at night, uh, and uh, we lost it by one vote. Uh, I won't name you the four, and especially the guy that said he prayed about it, and the Lord told him that he, would, he should support me, and then he went the other way. <laughs> and it was later in the night than 12 o'clock. It was way into the morning, I remember. I, it, was, uh, it was way late. So all hell broke loose. <clears throat> We then put it in the budget, and of course Clinton vetoed it twice. And then finally, the next spring, a year later, we're still in there fighting away. We passed it simply because uh, Kika and Charlie Stenholm and others, the blue dogs, if I could refer to them that way, uh, when they knew we had to have a farm bill. And they knew it was very difficult, and it wasn't going to happen any other way. And so they voted for it, and we passed it. Uh, that was the uh, first of eight farm bills that uh, I've had the privilege of, of working on. So I've been ranking and chairman and ranking and chairman on both sides. I'm very proud of the last one that uh, all of you helped out with, where we got 87 votes in the Senate. That set a record. But uh, I, can, I can think of all these past chairmen, and the one thing that comes out is that in the end result, we work together to get a bill. And I think the Ag Committee on both the House side and the Senate side probably represent what everybody wants today, and that's to, why, why can't you folks get along and work together and do something? You know, make a difference. And uh, we've done that. And each one of you, uh, gentlemen, thank you for the privilege of knowing you, and uh, thank you for the privilege of, of, uh, of serving with you. And Thank don't you, under, uh, Chairman. And don't for underestimate over. the chairman's craftiness, the chairman emeritus. I got invited to a meeting in the thick of that battle with the Speaker Gingrich and a number of cotton uh, members of Congress. Wasn't sure I'd cotton in my district, but not as much as Mr. Emerson or Mr. Combest. And when the meeting was over with, I suddenly found a chairman around the corner, not very many steps away. I've never been so interrogated in my life. Your intelligence gathering through that whole process was quite impressive, Mr. Chairman. He knew what was going on at every step. I don't know exactly what all strings he was pulling, but he was working it hard. That's a compliment, sir. Well, the one thing you, that Pat said that is really true is when you're chairman, you know, your priorities really kind of take a back seat to having to do whatever you have to do to get the bill done. And it's not like you're going to get in there and you're going to be able to do everything your way. If, if you're going to try to do that, it isn't going to work. You know, so you've got to figure out a way that everybody can win something, you know, get something they can live with and make it work out. And that's, uh, it's not easy to do. And uh, it's going to get harder. I think the next farm bill, after all of these payments that have been sent out there, <laughs> I don't know how in the world they're going to get this thing back in, under control, but... Yeah. And Pat's entirely right, and so are you. Do you remember, Mr. Chairman, in the 2014 process when I was chairman, you were ranking member, and we were working through a variety of issues, and we came up with about $45 billion worth of savings. And we went to the floor, some of my idealistic friends on my side of the room, after they got done running all of their amendments and they did all of their stuff, we wound up saving $23 billion. If they'd helped us just a little bit more on my side of the room, we would have had no savings. That's right. That's an editorial comment. Yeah, well, well and, that, and that 23 turned out to be a gross underestimate, underestimate of what we actually did sign because I think it wound up in excess of $100 million that, uh, that was saved on the deal. 18 for our bill was really the, kind of the tale of two cities. 
because you had the nutrition fist fight that we had. It, it was very contentious and very argumentative and, and not a lot of give on either side in that regard. And then everything else. And everything else was the normal process. Uh, all of the things that, uh, that my Democrat colleagues had wanted to try, we tried to work with them and get all the stuff in our, the normal thing that you guys would normally talk about. There was a nutrition title that really caused the biggest uh, issue. And you got 87 votes in the, in the uh, Senate. I'm on the floor of that final night for the conference report, and I'm hoping to get to 225. Uh, Colin had gotten to 319, and I was like, well, there's no way we're going to do that. And we shot past 225 pretty quickly, wound up at, uh, at 369. Uh, it would have been 371, but I had Vicki Hartzer's mom had passed away, so she was home taking care of that and didn't get to vote. And one of my Texas colleagues missed the vote. He's wandering around on the Senate floor doing something over there, and he flat missed the vote. So. But 369 is a record on our side as well. But it really was two distinct farm bills in effect because of the, the contentiousness of nutrition uh, in, in conference uh, on, in here in our committee. It was a straight committee line vote coming out of the committee on, in the first round at the House. It was 213 to 211. I think I had a couple of Republican buddies who just missed the vote on purpose so they had to vote no uh, on the deal. But uh, it really was uh, you know, the best of both worlds, uh, the worst of one and the best of the other. On the, uh, on the 18 Farm Bill. Well, thank you. Uh, and thank all of you for, uh, are we going to have questions or are we just, we've kind of covered the waterfront, I think. Uh, so, you know, there's been noted other places that uh, there are going to be 85 years of experience. 86. 86 years on the Ag Committee that are not going to be there next uh, Congress. And Mr. Lucas is trying to get back on the committee. Uh, they, on their side, they have a misguided idea of term limits. Um, but <laughs> in any event, um, um, you know, it's going to be a challenge. And I think on our side of the aisle, I think they're going to have a difficult time finding enough members to serve. You know, that's going to be an issue. And it just shows you the changing of America. Yeah. You know, it's become more urban, more suburban, less rural and it's it's um, makes this committee a real challenge so well the ratio if you know, we don't know what the ratios will be until probably january but if it goes a strict numerical system it's uh you know 51 49 yeah so it'd be 24 22 in our committee and so all that's that's going to be a, a a tough job as chairman in order to make sure you got yeah. uh, the well but at the end of the day you're going to have to work together anyway sure. and uh, i've got an opinion that um I hope is accurate and that with COVID-19 and empty grocery shelves, um, the entire food supply chain was endangered. I think people figured out, hopefully they figured out that they're, uh, that, they're, uh, that their meals don't come from, uh, you know, the grocery store. But I think people had a, greater understanding of the uh, tough job we, that we face in agriculture. And uh, so maybe we can make a little lemonade out of that. I think that's one question that every farm group, I was on with the uh, Kansas Farm Bureau with their 100th anniversary last night. And this question always comes up. Uh, I think they feel very underappreciated for the job that they do. And that's true. And it's uh, extremely unfortunate. How can we best tell our story? I remember back in the day when we would <clears throat> practice the, uh, uh, oh, just an example of reaching out, we would uh, uh, pick an urban member and uh, adopt them for a week. And when we had a break, we would take the urban member back and show them around this, that, or the other. I noted when I was a staff member, and Keith always used to do that about every summer. and. Uh, so I told him one time, I said, I don't know why we're doing this, because they go back and they vote the same damn way that they were going to do anyway. <laughs> but it was a, at least, you know, PR. But if there is some kind of a light at the end of the tunnel with COVID, I think the American people do appreciate it, American agriculture and what we're all about a little bit more. Yep. I hope I, so. I agree with that. Well, I want to thank uh, all of our distinguished chairmen for being with us today. And uh, uh, we will... Whenever things get back to normal, we will schedule a uh, celebration here in the uh, House Ag Committee room. 
to uh, celebrate the 200th anniversary of the uh, committee. And um, hopefully we'll all be able to make it back and have a big party and not have to worry about uh, staying six feet apart and, and wearing masks and all this other stuff that we're dealing with now. So thank you all very much. Uh, thank our staff. As all of you know, uh, we're only as successful as our staff uh, uh, that uh, keeps us in line and keeps us informed and um, helps us get through all of this. So we appreciate the staff on both sides of the aisle and, and uh, they helped us put this together here today as well. So thank you all and uh, we'll get together next year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Oh, we're taking a picture. Talk about a wide land.